Hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to start with the non-deterministic finite automata. We already have seen about the deterministic finite automata in the earlier lectures. We have solved many examples related to the DFA. Now it's a turn for the NFA. And uh, in the sequence, we will discuss about how to convert the given non-deterministic finite automata to the deterministic finite automata also. So, uh, a scenario we pick, like we have a language. Hai. And the language says that it is the collection of the words or the collection of the strings that contains the symbol AB and W starts with A. Or there is a language that ends with A. So these are the two languages and we will try to understand the non-deterministic finite automata with the help of these examples. So let's say the first language is L1 and the second language is L2. So the set of the strings in the first language would be uh, any string that starts with A, for example, A itself, or it can be AB, or it can be ABB, or it can be AAB, or AAA, and so on and so forth. So in this string, you can see that the strings are always starting with the symbol A. Now, if I have to draw the DFA for this, uh, the DFA would be like this, that there is a state A, which is the starting state. And uh, the string is starting with A and it is going to state number B. And at a state B, Chahe A I, Chahe B I, I am not concerned about that. But if my string does not start with A, let's say it starts with B, then it should go to the dead state. And at the dead state, if A and B is coming, I will remain at the dead state only. So here, the state number B is the final state because only single A should be accepted and anything of that is coming after A and B, that will also be accepted by this automata. Now, so this is the DFA for the given language L1. If I have to just write the NFA or draw the NFA for this, so what will that be? Then I will be concerned only with the symbols, which is, or only with the string that is starting with A. So I reach to the state B, which will be the final state. And if a string length is more than one, so I will remain at the state number B only. Now you can see that, I am not concerned about going to the dead state when B is coming at the start. So I am only concerned about the string which starts with A. It means I am ignoring some of the part and I am accepting the rest of the part. Means out of these strings which are given in this language, I am trying to accept all these languages. But I am not concerned about rejecting this. Some of these strings may be rejected and some of the strings will not be rejected but NFA through the NFA it is sure that all the strings which are the part of the language that will be accepted but in the DFA all the strings which are the part of the language will be accepted but all these strings which are not the part of the language will be rejected for sure now let's say we are going to uh, write the NFA for language L2 so what the language L2 is saying that the string uh, the strings which is ending with a so it may be A, it may be BA, it may be AA, it may be AAA, it may be ABA, and so on and so forth. So it's an infinite language. So what will NFA be for this language? So let's say there is a state A, which is the start state. My string should end with A. So the smallest string that is going to be accepted by this is this one. So B will be the final state. Now, initially, if A comes or B comes, I don't mind. So I am only concerned with the strings ending with A. So I have drawn a transition from state number A to B with the symbol A. But initially, if I get A or B, I will remain at the state A. Now in the DFA, the kind of the transition that we used in this automata will not be acceptable. For example, there are two transitions from taking symbol A. So if I am at a state A, by taking a symbol A, I may remain with A or I may go to state number B. So there are two possibilities. 
that either I may stay at the sta uh, state number A or I may go to the state number B. So I'm not sure where I should go. But yes, there are two possibilities where I can go. So I can say that there is a state A on getting a symbol A. I may either go to the state number B or I may go to state number A. So at random, we can select any of these two states for the transition or we may take both of the transitions in the parallel and let the machine go and uh, to let, let the machine go to accept the strings out of this language. So let's say we are taking one of the sim one of the string that is B A. So if I start my transition from a state number A, so with B, there is only one possibility to go to a state number B, sorry, a state number A. But if I get a, uh, a after this, so I have two possibilities. I can either go to state number A or I can go to state number B. So you may either select the transition randomly. And if it is not leading to the final state, then you can go back and choose the another one. Let's say if you are choosing this one, so this is not the final state. So you come back and you select this one. So randomly you have chosen this or what you can do that you can run the machine parallelly to first to go to this state and then to this state. So whichever is leading to the final state, that will be your choice uh, to go for. So in the deterministic finite automata, we are sure about that which state will go. But in the non-deterministic finite automata, we are not sure about which state I can go to. So now let's try to understand uh, with one more concept that is that will clarify about the non-deterministic finite automata. Let's say I have two states. The two states are A and B. Okay, So the two states that we have is A and B. Now, what are the possibilities of the transition? If I have a state A and a state B, then the two possibilities of the transition are that I can go to state number A or I can go to state number B or I can go to state number A and B both or you may not have any transition defined. So I'm representing this as phi that the transition is not defined. For example, uh, if you see this automata for the string that is ending with A. So in B, I, I'm not defining that the where will be the transition with A and where will be the transition with B. So the state B for symbol A, the transition will be phi. For state B and symbol small b, the transition will be phi because I'm not known that where should I go with these symbols. So now uh, there are four possibilities that I can go with either A state or B state or AB state or phi. So there are total four, poss four possibilities. Similarly, if I have three states, so what will be the different possibilities of the states that I can go to? It can be A separately or it can be B only, it can be C only or it may be A and B both or it may be B and C both or it may be A and C both or it may be A, B, C all the states or it may so happen that there is no defined transition. So I'll write it, write it as phi. So there are total eight possibilities, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So there are eight possibilities of the states that I can go with on getting any symbol at the at any of the state. So there are total eight possibilities. OK. So if I uh, generalize this, I can say that if I am having two states in the NFA, so the total number of the possibilities are four. So I can write it as two square or if I have three states, so I can say that I can move to either of these states. It means two raised to the power of three possibilities are there. Similarly, if I have n total number of the states in the NFA, then the total number of states that I can move to will be 2 raised to the power n. So there are 2 raised to the power n possibilities. So what we can say that the transition function del is defined as q, which is the total number of states cross sigma, which are the input symbol that may map to any of the 2 raised to the power n states. But in the DFA, what, what was the case? I hope you remember the case. When you take the cross product of Q with Sigma, it means you are defining the transition for any other state with the input symbol. So this leads to any of the states in Q. Fine. 
once again let's go back to the example of the dfa for the language l1 so this was the dfa for the language l1 so you know that if i if i am taking a state a and if i am taking a symbol small a so this will certainly lead to the state b i'm sure about this transition similarly with the state a on the symbol b i'm sure that i will lead to state number c i will transit to state number c so with a state and a defined symbol it is defined that you will move to one of the state only exactly one of the states but this is not the case in the nfa so if i define the definition of uh, if i take up the definition of the nfa then nfa is a five tuple so what does this five tuple contain the set of states set of all the states then the input alphabet then the start state let's say the q0 is the start state and let's say set of final states which is f and the transition function del and now how the del is defined we already have discussed about this that if you take the symbol q and you take a cross product of this with the input alphabets it maps to either of the two raised to the power n states what was the case in the dfa the definition of the dfa was also similar the dfa contains five tuples or dfa is defined by five tuples q is the set of states sigma is the set of input symbols q0 is the start state f means the final states and del means the transition function so the only difference is in the transition function if you take the cross product of q with sigma means the input symbols it maps to exactly one state so this mapping is unique mapping so you go to one of the states in q okay so the only difference is in the transition function so this is the difference between the dfa and the nfa in the subsequent lectures we will learn about uh, how to construct the nfa for the different scenarios so thanks for watching this video